Welcome back. Today we're going to do a brief review of nasopharyngeal cancer staging, a brief review of the anatomy of the nasopharynx. Remember, it's behind the hard palate and below the clivus, so it's this area right here. And the contents of the nasopharynx are the squamous mucosa that's lining the nasopharynx, the lymphoid tissue, aka adenoids, the pharyngeal constrictor muscles, the levator palatini muscle, and the torus tuberius. On CT, you can see the torus tuberius right here. Behind it is the fossa of Rosenmuller, which is lined by that squamous epithelium. Now, nasopharyngeal cancer staging, the TNM staging, T1, can, tumors confined to the nasopharynx, T2 goes to the soft tissues, T3 involves bony structures or paranasal sinuses, T4, intracranial extension or into the infratemporal fossa, down into the hypopharynx, to the orbit or the masticator space. Lymph nodes, the usual, are there any abnormal lymph nodes, yes or no, what's the size, what's the location? as well as the M, which is distant metastatic disease. So example one, you can see a large soft tissue mass filling the nasopharynx, a little bit asymmetric to the right. Here's the pterygoid plate. Here's that carotid space. You have soft tissue going into that carotid space. Then the key things to look for, are there any erosions of the adjacent bony structures? Here you can see erosion of the cortex. You could see it here, the clivus as well. You see irregularity, lucency, erosion of that cortex with a little bit of soft tissue extending into that sphenoid sinus. So on this case, the size of the mass is not included in the T staging. It's really where the mass extends, what structures are invaded. So this is a nasopharyngeal mass with bony invasion of the clivus. There is no lymphadenopathy, which I don't show on this imaging. And then distant meths were not assessed on CT. So if we were going to stage this mass, this would be a T3N0MX. Here is a more subtle case of bone erosion. On the axial image, you can see discontinuity of that posterolateral lateral wall of the sphenoid sinus with some soft tissue density material within the sinus itself. On the sagittal view, you can see a defect extending from this nasopharyngeal mass into the sphenoid sinus, an even more subtle defect in the dorsal aspect of the clivus with soft tissue on either side, going ventral to that basilar artery, and then a more lateral sagittal view. You also see that soft tissue mass with extension into the sphenoid sinus. So this also counts as bony erosion. Example two. On bone windows, you see a soft tissue mass eroding that left petrous apex and that lateral aspect of the clivus at the expected location of that petroclival ligament. So you have this soft tissue mass here. Here it is on soft tissue windows. You can see the soft tissue with that bony erosion. In this location, you want to get an MRI with contrast to evaluate for intracranial extension. So here's that enhancing nasopharyngeal soft tissue mass in that left nasopharynx. But what you're looking for is subtle intracranial extension. So you can see that there's thickening of that infralateral wall of Meckel's cave on the left as compared to the right, as well as some nodular thickening and enhancement of the dura in the inferior aspect of the middle cranial fossa. So this one is upstage. This is considered intracranial invasion. So we have this mass. We have no abnormal lymph nodes. We did not assess distant METs. So this would be stages at T4N0MX. Example three, on the original CT scan, we could see these partially necrotic or cystic retropharyngeal lymph nodes. There's on the right, there's on the left. And as you go more inferiorly on the CT, you can see lymphadenopathy. It was throughout the left level two, three, four, and five nodal chains. So here's level two, and then here's that supraclavicular area. However, Though the nasopharynx was considered to be a prime suspect, especially with this retropharyngeal lymphadenopathy, on the CT, we really could not see a mass. Now, this left nasopharynx, the torus tuberius, looks a little bit more bulbous than on the right, but nothing that was obviously mass-like. However, the PET scan showed that that area of subtle nodularity was the true culprit. 
So staging this one, it would be the primary lesion confined to the nasopharynx. The end station would be an N3 since there is supraclavicular lymphadenopathy and technically there's level two through five lymphadenopathy. On the PET scan, there were no distant metastatic lesions. So the final staging would be T1, N3, M0. An extra case, this lesion was seen incidentally on a brain MRI. You have a mass, polypoid mass in the nasopharynx that's iso-intense on T1. On T2, it's a little bit gray, so a little hypo-intense, but not super dark. There's not much enhancement, maybe a little bit of peripheral enhancement, but it shows some restricted diffusion on the DWI. So this actually is a nasopharyngeal lymphoma. Thank you for your attention. Thanks to everyone for tuning in to this great video on nasopharyngeal cancer staging, where we saw a couple of case examples. We're going to have at least one more video on staging of cancers of the larynx. If you haven't seen the other videos on the site, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and check out the rest of the site. Thanks.